गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन दिस इज अनिल देव गुप्ता स्टूडेंट ऑफ बी एस सी ऑनर्स फॉरेंसिक साइंस फ्रॉम एम एट यूनिवर्सिटी एंड इट्स माई ऑनर एंड प्रिवलेज टू गिव अ पेपर प्रेजेंटेशन इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू ऑल दी ऑनरेबल चेयरपर्सन रिस्पेक्टेड ज्यूरी डेलीगेट्स फैकल्टीज एंड माई फेलोमेट्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल एंड विदाउट मेकिंग एनी फर्दर डिले आई विल बिगिन विद प्रेजेंटिंग माई टॉपिक इज रिविशन द कॉल ऑफ डिसेप्शन स्टार्टिंग विद दिस पेंडेमिक सिचुएशन द वर्ल्ड इज फेसिंग फॉर अ कपल ऑफ ईयर्स द इंटरनेट बिकम्स अ मेजर पार्ट ऑफ लाइफ ऑफ एवरी वन due to which the need of cyber security and the awareness of cyber crime has come to the limelight so starting with some terminologies that what is a cyber crime it is defined as a crime where a computer is an object of crime or it is used as a tool for committing the crime hence to avoid such digital attacks cyber security is there and cyber security is the practice of protecting critical systems from sensitive informations for uh, from digital attacks so where does the word phishing came from basically phishing is a combination of two words it is voice and phishing phishing is an example of social engineering where the attacker exploits human error to gain sensitive information and in phishing the means used for gaining those information is via call and the information includes the individual's credit card credentials and the o- uh, confirmation otp uh next let's have a look at the message received by the victim that he or she got duped uh, can you change the slide ma'am so from this we can understand that the basic motive of the attacker is to get the login credential of the victim and transfer the maximum amount of the money from the victim's account to their respective accounts and the message received by the victim is just look like that that certain amount of uh certain amount has been debited from their account uh can you change the slide ma'am uh so the question arises how the attacker get successful in doing such scams on a large scale and what is their mode of operation uh, there are three broad approaches used by the cyber criminals which uh, the first one is threat second is inducement and third one is impersonation in the first one they give threats to the victim that uh, their card might get blocked or they must pay a certain amount of penalty or they will no longer be able to make any transaction from their card so that the victim get afraid and just do as they say second is they try to induce the victim uh, into their fake offers like of getting a cashback reward or the victim might get a brand new car as a reward or they offer uh, the victim a tour package of abroad uh, which is sponsored from their respective banks and the third one is they try to impersonate as a bank officials or a trusted identity with whom the victim can share their sensitive information uh, sometimes they also merge the mentioned approaches while duping the victim and you found it very interesting to know that by the time in presenting in front of you all someone somewhere in the country is becoming a victim of cyber crime of financial frauds and the headlines of such cases would be same as we see in the next slide Uh, like a mumbai cit- senior citizen latest victim of phishing fraud loses 60000 rupees to the bank official or a retired bst official loses rupees 1.10 lakhs claims police uh, phishing cases in mumbai are on the rise keeping police on the toes or a retired hsl employee encounters a classic case of phishing call trace back to jharkhand and delhi role of organized gangs is suspected it was observed that when these calls were traced back most of them were from jamtar and mewar and both of them were known uh, are now known as the fishing capital of india and in the period of the lockdown the growth of such crimes increased exponentially and almost ev- as almost every transaction and the work was carried out via internet and in the next two slides we will see about the numerous headlines of such crimes happening everywhere in the country and these are some of the snapshots of such attacks that you can see that delhi sees a steep spike in cyber crimes during lockdown or like after jamtara now mewat is the new fishing capital of india and the cyber crimes witness a spur since lockdown in 2020 next slide please ma'am you can see that uh, identity th- theft remains the biggest threat of cyber security in india and also that the increase in cyber crimes the rbi calls for increased vigilance uh next slide please now uh, we have looked into the how wishing happens and what the scamsters do so the question is is that how does the investigation of such crimes takes place and if the attacker somehow is caught under which section he or she will be punished 
uh, at first the rbi guideline says that if a victim of such scams uh, the victim of such scams must report to the uh, bank of their particular branch and the branch manager cannot deny helping the victim and so the branch manager informs the victim to register a complaint in a police station and the cyber cell after the uh, filing of complaint the police report the bank and question them about the transaction and the bank informed them after several transaction of the payment from one account to the another the payment has been withdrawn and nothing can be done as it cannot be tracked further so the case is closed but if in any situation if when the police get an address from the bank they just found that uh, found that it is an empty plot and the account is opened on fake information the case is closed again uh, in another situation if uh, uh, police started tracking a mobile phone uh, it is found that a mobile phone is connected to the nearest mobile tower and if police is lucky enough the tracking mobile could be in a range of 500 meter radius but uh, it does not happen every time and the mobile phone could be in the range of 2 to 3 km radius and to search a scamster in a radius of 2 to 3 km is really challenging for police the last uh, uh, problem faced by the police that in india the investigating powers are with the inspector rank officer and in most of the rural areas the inspector is not there so many cases are not reported and the reported cases are not investigated properly so a solution for this issue is that we can dilute the investigating powers under this cases till the head constable level due to which the work management of the inspector can be done and also most cases can be reported and investigated properly and Uh, if the perpetrator is caught by the police then he or she is punished under it act section 66c uh, which is punishment for identity theft and 66d punishment for cheating by personation by using computer resource and under ipc 420 cheating and dishonesty inducing delivery of property since uh, it is found that Uh, since our it act is uh, very weak hence these crimes are bailable offenses on which the bail is granted and once the offender gets the bail they get back to their work of duping another victim uh, and the punishment under this section is the imprisonment of 3 years and uh, shall also be liable to fine which may extend to 1 lakh and under ipc 420 the imprisonment is of 7 years with or without the fine uh now comes the another question uh, in everybody's mind that if the police are unable to do much of in these cases then what can be done on personal level to avoid such attacks so here are some thumb rules to be safe from such frauds first one is minimizing the fraud you have to understand that bank every bank provide a facility to uh, an uh, to set an online transaction limit uh, so that if someone uh, just uh, gone through a fraud then the fraud uh, can be minimized to a certain amount of uh, money uh, second comes is the uh, that you have to remember that under any circumstances or any situation you don't have to share your confirmation otp with anyone third one is that uh, uh, you must uh, remember that while you are receiving a payment from someone apart from your e wallet number you don't have to share anything like your cvv or your card number or atp pin nothing is needed and the last one is uh, no sharing of card details at all which is this information is said by everyone uh, and if one follow these rules then he or she will be avoiding such crimes and in this slide you will be looking at the screenshots of the pot portals where the victim can report about the crime that has happened with them as per the guidelines set by the rbi and the government the right one is the uh, portal of the uh, maharashtra government and the left one is the uh, portal set by the indian government which works all over the india uh, in the next slide uh, um, i want to end in my presentation with this and i want to say that everyone just be aware of your well wishers Uh, uh this is the last slide these are the references in which i would end my presentation thank you everyone for your time and your patience listening and now i would be welcoming the questions